Oh man, I just recorded two episodes and had my mic muted. <laughs> Alright, let's just go back over what I did in the past two episodes. Previously we have built this star map and we made it so that as you go to the various stars within the star map you go into a battle screen. But the problem is that you go into the battle screen starting from the very first star and then you can't get out of the battle. There's no way for it to uh, transition back out. So I'm going to take you on a tour of how I made it so you can. The first thing I did is I, I created another uh, uh, to make things easier, I created a, a, a uh, scene that just instantiates the player's ship. And then it immediately transitions over into the navigation scene. The navigation scene uh, has a couple of changes to it. I got rid of the uh, galaxy navigation script. It's still here, but I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Um, all it did was make things more complicated. Uh, the, the camera will be pointed at the primary ship. It doesn't need to have some sort of magic galaxy navigation ship shit thing going on. Uh, so the character nav script, the, the uh, galaxy nav on the player's ship, is actually what does the majority of all of the logic of getting around and clicking on shit. I also ran into some problems with the order of operations involving when the start function actually gets called. So I've abstracted away nearly all of the start functions. Uh, for example, here in star, there's no longer any start function stuff. Instead, there's a manual start, and the manual start is there specifically because start wasn't called until after the on-level load was called. So you'd have all of these generic stars that hadn't had any of their values set, and it would confuse the hell out of the player ship. And over here, um, in ship nav control, we have a new event called on kickoff. And what happens is once the ship nav control is absolutely sure that everyone has signed up, then it kicks off an event. And it just says, okay, everyone, everyone's got everything set up, ready to start, so go ahead and start. Uh, and that gets called here an update. Update always gets handled after all of the starts have been called, so that's okay for it to happen then. So any event that any any uh, object that needs to sign up for event handling does so during its start, but it doesn't do anything which requires other things to have started until this is called. The only thing that catches on kickoff is the star map, which just catches the kickoff uh, and then sets itself up and then calls on star map created, uh, which in return gets caught by ship nav control. And while it seems a little bit odd um, for ship nav control to call kickoff for that to go out to a player ship and then come right back right back to ship nav control that's just fine uh, that's a fairly robust way of doing things that won't screw us over uh, too much later on so here in uh, handle star map once we get a call from the star map that we're ready to uh, uh, that the star map has been created we set up where our star is, and we do that by keeping track of the location of the star where we went in, um, and then we uh, 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 we use that same location later on when we come out of the star map to make sure that we don't fall back into the same star and to set us up with the correct star. So here you can see us going through the various stars and checking against our origin and trying to, and if it has, a, if we have a uh, and this is actually supposed to be greater than... That explains the logic error I was getting. Um, so uh, it sets us to the star that is closest to wherever our uh, camp, wherever our range was. And now I did make a lot of changes here, and if you're following along, trying to program it yourself, at this point it's impossible for you to program the same thing that I programmed. Maybe I'll include a, uh, uh, a download but to be honest, I don't think so. This is mostly just for my own sake. Um, uh, and I doubt that this this one's not going to be nearly as popular as the Minecraft one, uh, which was popular to the extent of like 15 views. Uh, so here we're going to do uh, blah, 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 blah. Yep, and that should be... I think that's all the structural changes I made. I made loads and loads of minor changes, such as changing the way that stars name themselves, and uh, changing the way that stars get calculated, and a whole bunch of other small details. Oh, I have to be... I have to start in spawn. There we go. 
So here you can see that I've got it down so there's only three stars in this galaxy and I did that specifically to do the testing on the seed. Uh, the, the player ship now carries the seed value for the galaxy map which means that uh, uh, as the ship is um, okay there we go uh, which means that the ship is uh, responsible for passing that seed into the star map and therefore when you want to explore a new galaxy the player ship just you just punch in a seed value into the player ship's heading and it goes there and you get the exact galaxy that you would have gotten if anyone else had punched it in. Once you make changes to that galaxy, those are stored in uh, uh, in, in objects that are that are persistent. Of course, only three stars means that the closest star closest star is often very far away. Herlag, the star. Oof. All right, so here we are, and you can see our ship's our shield already is full, because our shield our ship has been created a long time ago, so we came in with full combat stats. Press space. Now you can see we have an error here where we didn't start at her lag. We started at uh, IS Nickum, the original one, and that's because we didn't we don't actually update correctly when we exit to. Um, first off, let's go ahead and increase the number of stars before I forget. We don't actually properly exit uh, so that when we jump out here in ship nav control, uh, we drop out of warp. We also need to go into warp. Where's our where's our jump into warp? Drop out of warp. Oh, that's correct. Drop out of warp. Uh, we actually need to make it so that our origin equals star dot transform dot position. Actually, just transform dot position. There you are. So we're around a ship, a star called Nilum. Let's go over here to Sufal. I'm going to wait until the ship is pointed in this general direction. There we go. You know, originally I didn't like the way that the ship kind of spun around like that, but it's actually growing on me because it means that when you set out uh, to warp, it really depends on the direction that the ship is pointed. So there we are. We now have a persistent star that we go to. To show you what I was talking about, oh, I guess it doesn't actually matter that much. Um, but right now we have the basics for this game. We can now travel the star map, we have a persistent object, and we have logical persistency uh, back into the star map here. Uh, there's a whole bunch of tweaking we need to do, like basically all of it, um, but uh, we now have a basic setup, and given, given the absolute horror of episodes 15 and 16, um, I'm not actually all that sad that they didn't record, because they were awful.